Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, an internal medicine and rheumatology specialist. And today I'm joining flight paramedics as they rescue and transport critically ill patients in helicopters. Aircraft wise, November is the aircraft online, except it's not online right now. It should be up and ready in about an hour or so. This morning, the helicopter has been grounded for maintenance. The engineers are torquing the rotor hub, which means they're tightening the bolts to secure the blades. I'm not gonna lie, loose bolts sound terrifying. So I'm not surprised when the paramedics tell me that they avoid disrupting or distracting the engineers while they're working. While we're waiting, Mike and Evan prepare their medical equipment, stocking up on life-saving medications, as well as tightly regulated medications for pain and sedation. You know, a bunch of fentanyl, smaller ampules, bigger ampules of fentanyl as well, medaz. All their equipment is organized into small, portable bags so they can easily bring them to the scene of an accident. Here's their equipment for intubation, which allows them to insert a breathing tube. And recently, they've started carrying blood so they can transfuse trauma patients right at the scene of an accident. We just got a call, so we're heading out. Guys, never been on a helicopter before. I'm both excited and very nervous. My gosh. Notice how it looks like the blades of the helicopter are moving super slowly? It's because the blades are actually moving so quickly that my camera's shutter speed can't keep up. Cool, eh? All right, here we go. I thought I was going to feel pretty nervous, but I honestly feel quite comfortable, especially knowing all the redundancies in place. Unlike many helicopters, we've got two pilots in case something happens to one of them, and this one has two fully functioning engines, so even if one completely fails, we'll still be okay. Plus, look at these views of Toronto, it's absolutely unreal. While we're in the air, I had a chance to chat with Mike and Evan about what it's like to be a flight paramedic. I'm learning there are two main parts to the job. All right, so you must be seeing a really wide variety of patients on, on each of these shifts. Yeah, so uh, we're sent to take care of a lot of the most uh, critically ill and injured patients in the province. So uh, because of that sort of almost selection bias, we get to see in our huge catchment area, uh, we get to see a, a high volume of the sort of weird and wonderful things that if you were in any one center, you might not see very often in your career. So it's sort of like the most exciting 30 minutes of every specialty every day. And the second part is keeping the patient alive and comfortable. My primary job is transport, is to get them to where they need to be. Uh, I think one of the challenges we have is just the limited resources we have. So. Uh, Compared to you know a big trauma team at a level one trauma center, we might arrive to a scene call for a multi-system trauma patient who might be unresponsive with all kinds of injuries, and they might need to have chest needles done, their pelvis wrapped, they might need fractures reduced, they might need rapid sequence induction of anesthesia and placing them on a ventilator, and uh, running sedation analgesia for them. They might also be hypotensive and require blood products and uh, you know, tranexamic tran acid, calcium, like running a massive transfusion essentially, and uh, it's just me and Mike. While we're flying, we learn that we're heading to the scene of a trauma. It sounds like a motor vehicle accident involving a motorcycle. And at this point, we're still waiting to hear more about the patient's condition. Lizzie 799, just to let you know we're about uh, six minutes back to your scene call. Uh, we're having some calm issues here. Uh, any update on the patient? 799, stand by. I'll see if I can get the crew. Hey, there we go. Uh, so when we get out, uh, what we'll typically do, we'll probably just take the bags to start and then uh, just stay with us, keep your helmet on, and um, stay close and then we'll go have a look. They'll usually be in the, the back of a truck by the time we get there, so we'll hop in the back of the truck. All right, 10-4, copy, we are canceled. Or that'll happen. 
All right. This happens all the time. We get canceled from something. They get there. It's not as bad as they think. We get canceled, and now they're they're getting us to go to another scene call. So we're gonna check the coordinates, see where it is. We'll get the pilots to weather. Coordinates are north four four two seven five eight. Good Nikki in a sec here. Back um, off seven nine November. Nine nine November. Go ahead. Yeah, pilots accepted. Be there in about fifteen. Now we're being sent to urgently transfer a patient from a small center to a large hospital. The patient presented with tearing chest pain, and the emergency team found that one arm had a blood pressure 100 points higher than the other arm. Putting the whole picture together, this is very concerning for an aortic dissection. The aorta is the largest, most important blood vessel in the body, which connects directly to the heart. In a dissection, the inner part of the blood vessel wall tears, and the force of the blood being pumped out of the heart causes it to continue tearing. This can block off arteries, like the ones supplying blood to the arm. And that can lead to a big blood pressure difference between both arms of the patient. If this is what's happening, the patient needs emergency treatment. Unfortunately, he's currently at a small center with no CT scan to confirm the diagnosis. In this case, minutes matter, and transferring him by helicopter rather than driving by ambulance could mean the difference between life and death. The patient arrives at the meeting location shortly after we land. Mike and Evan get a quick report from the nurse, rapidly secure the patient, and within minutes, we're back in the air. They're monitoring him very closely, connecting him to a cardiac monitor, controlling his blood pressure, and managing his chest pain with a medication called fentanyl. Canada is a huge country, and a major challenge we face is providing equitable care for people living in rural and remote communities. Organizations like Orange are helping to close that gap by transporting patients to major cities where they can access services. And yet, we still have a long way to go before we can truly call it equal health care for all. Once we arrive at the larger hospital, he's immediately transferred to the cardiac care unit to get further testing and treatment. You said no pain since then, but a hundred point difference between left and right arm when it comes to blood pressure. So our job is done here. And now it's time for lunch. And since it's Canada, of course, the only restaurants available in the hospital are Tim Hortons. <laughs> Hanging out with the pilots and paramedics is a lot of fun because as you can imagine, they've seen some wild things and have unbelievable stories. All right, so we just took off uh, only a couple minutes in the air and we were heading to a car accident, but um, it actually got canceled. So I'm learning that a fair number of these traumas do get canceled along the way, about a third of them for various different okay. reasons. Yeah, seasonal. Uh, yeah, seasonal reasons. So. Fair enough. So I think the thing that has surprised me the most is the wide scope of practice of these flight paramedics. I mean, they are doing everything. Intubation, managing traumas, uh, pregnancy complications, everything from kids to adults, really any emergency that could happen, they see and they're transporting and dealing with. Um, and I've learned that they keep up these skills by using really high fidelity simulations, which is so exciting. Anyway, this is so cool and I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm speechless, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Okay, so the team has just been called to the scene of a trauma. Now, unfortunately, it's about 45 minutes flight away, and because it's really hot outside, literally the weight of me and my backpack is too much. They have to conserve as much fuel as possible, so I can't go for this one, but we can wave them goodbye because it's been such an incredible experience. So that's it for today. A huge thank you to Orange and of course to Mike and Evan for taking me along with them. I feel like I've sort of checked something off my bucket list that I didn't even know was there. And I've learned so much and gained so much respect for the medicine that they do as flight paramedics. It's really remarkable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and that way I'll see you in the next video. So bye for now.